And now on the BBC Home Service, we join Reginald Oryx as he goes up your end. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm very glad that you've chosen to come with me this evening as I continue my travels around our fair island, meeting some of the local characters as I go. I talked recently to a Mrs. Edna Snedge about how the neighbourhood in which she has lived her whole life has changed. It used to be all concrete and paving stones down our road until the council decided it needed cheering up. When they planted trees here, my old mum cried. She hated trees, didn't trust them on account of a tree having killed her brother. Rag and bone men are still a familiar sight and sound on our streets, but many similar characters have long since disappeared. Mr Murray Grimble told me about one such character he remembered from his youth. Kios, my favourite was always nail clipper sharpening man. You've got to remember, they were a luxury item back then, so you wouldn't just throw them away when they got worn. Obviously, you don't need big heavy machinery to sharpen nail clippers. I remember him now, leading his Falabella pony down the road, pulling orange box on a roller skate. The pumice stone he used to grind the edges, and the little brazier made out of a tin cup that he used to temper the spring. And of course the call he gave as he went along. Clippers! 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 One of the things that counteracts all that's wretched with ageing is the acquisition of wisdom. Mrs Gertrude Magnusson caught me in a bush in her garden, so I asked her about what she'd learned over the course of her life. Well, they say that you should follow your dreams, but I don't think most folk know how dangerous dreams can be. Back when I was a wee girl, my father spent a long time in prison because of a dream. I remember him telling me about it when I visited him once. Apparently, that night he'd had a dream that he was eating a giant marshmallow, and uh, when he woke up, he was in a Blackpool B&B with a dead poor. Aye, terrible things, dreams. Oh, people really are dreadful, aren't they? Here's another one I had the misfortune of bumping into on the fens. When I were a lad, it had been about 40 years since they'd built all the steam pumps that drained the farmland round here. I remember old Sam, eight years or so he must have been at the time. Everyone who walked past, he'd grab him by the jacket, sweep his arm round and say, Hey, I remember when all this wasn't fields. And he'd laugh like a hyena. He really was a tiresome old swan. We're nearly at the end of our programme today, but to fulfil my contractual obligations to the BBC, here's one more member of the mewling proletariat for you to listen to. This one adopts orphan children for a hobby. My last one, David, is blind. I went for a blind one, because I think it's nice to give something back to the little disabled kiddies. And really, if I'm honest, I've always wanted an excuse to learn sign language. Finally, I can go home and drink myself insensible. Until next time, I hope you've enjoyed me, Reginald Oryx, going up your end.